This activity is one of my favourite introduction activities to get students and teachers used to using Sketch a School or we even use markup sometimes to do this. It encompasses a bit of everyone can create and also some geometry and shapes. It's a great way to show them that they can draw no matter what they think their level of drawing ability is. So we start off with a four square grid and I'll airdrop this to them. Now you can use your Apple Pencil or you can use your finger to draw. It doesn't really matter, it works in both ways. And the first activity is a very basic introduction to just drawing shapes. So we start with saying, let's draw a square in the top hand corner. And you get students to draw a square. Then I ask them to draw a circle in the next box along. Then I get them to draw a triangle below the square. And then we look at drawing three different types of lines in the last box. So we draw a straight line, a diagonal line, and a wavy line. And then we look around the classroom and try and find objects that are made from a square and a circle and a triangle and different lines. And if we can see the shapes in the objects around us, then we can start to draw them much easier. The next activity we do is looking at using our square and our circle and our triangle and our different types of lines to actually draw some images. So I airdrop this to them and then we start to draw a picture. Now I give them one instruction at a time and I don't actually tell them what we're going to draw. I want them to try and guess as they're actually putting it together. So the first thing I get them to do is to draw a large circle. And I try to remind them that it doesn't really matter what it looks like, it doesn't have to be perfect. All art is subjective and we're just trying to have a little bit of fun with this drawing. Then I get them to draw a smaller circle inside this large circle. And then we draw a solid circle inside here, or I tell them a colored in circle. And I ask them to try and guess what we actually are drawing or what they've just drawn. Most of them say a face or an eye. And then I say, let's repeat that. So let's draw another smaller circle and another solid circle or colored in circle. Then I ask them to draw an upside down triangle in the middle. And again, I'll stop and ask, do you know what we're drawing? And they try to guess all the different things. At this point, a lot of the students will say an owl or a parrot. And it's quite interesting to see all the creative ideas that they come up with for what we're actually drawing. Then I ask them to draw a straight line and a curved line and another straight line and a curved line. Some of them start to figure out what we're actually drawing now. Then I say, let's draw some diagonal lines in and a straight line and the same on the other side, diagonal and a straight line. Now, most of them have guessed that we're starting to draw a cat and I say, well, what's missing from our cat? And they say ears. And so then on the top, we put on two triangles to draw our ears. Some students are really good and they say, can I do another triangle over the top to make it look more complicated? Then on the other side, we draw a different picture. So I ask them, all right, let's start with our upside down triangle, but bigger. So we draw a big upside down triangle. And then I ask them to draw a circle and do a solid circle inside and then repeat. And again, they start trying to guess what we're going to draw. A lot of them say at this stage, quite interesting things like a carrot or a pizza. Some students say a wolf and they're quite close. Then I ask them to draw another upside down triangle, but color it in. And I ask them to watch me first before they do it so they can see what I'd like them to do. So 
So we draw our upside down triangle in here. Now, a lot of students are still trying to figure out at this stage what we're actually trying to draw. And I say, all right, I'm gonna draw two more upside down triangles and tell me what you think it is. So after I've added in the other two upside down triangles that they realize they're drawing a dog. And we discuss that we've never really seen a dog with a triangle face, but it's a piece of art and it's quite fun to draw something in a little bit of a different way. And we've only used shapes to draw this and you've all been able to draw a cat and a dog and they feel really proud of the pictures that they've drawn. Then once we've done this, we move on to a task called one minute of madness. And I'll show you that task in another video. If you don't have Sketch a School available to you, or you wanna do this as a quick task for kids at home, go into Pages and open up a blank document and take a screenshot. Wake up. Take screenshot. Then you have a blank document that your kids or students can use and you can airdrop it out to them at any time. Using the Photos app, I can then access the screenshot that I have taken and I can airdrop this to students by tapping on the share icon in the top right hand corner to access my share sheet. I can then tap on airdrop and select the devices around me. and the students will now have a copy of this on their iPad. Once they have received the airdrop, we go through how to access markup so that they can actually do the same activity that we were just looking at. I get them to locate edit in the top right hand corner and then tap the three dots and tap markup. Now this can actually take a little bit of time when you're doing this with primary school students. Go through the steps very slowly and once they start to get it, they're actually able to access their brushes really quickly. I discuss the different brushes with them and how if they hold on it, they can access different thickness and opacity. And then how to change the color on top of the brush by either tapping one of the preset colors or the rainbow wheel to create their own color. And then you can draw the different shapes and also the cat and the dog just using the blank page. When the students are finished, we make sure we go through how we can actually save this. Because if they forget to tap done, then their image goes away. So I tell them, let's tap the blue done and then the yellow done so that we save our picture. If you need another blank document, you can always go back and take another screenshot. Or I teach students how they can duplicate by tapping on the share icon in the top right hand corner and selecting duplicate. Then I get the students to have a look at the duplicated copy of the image that they have. Then I ask them to tap edit in the top right hand corner. Then I get students to tap revert in the top right hand corner. But I explain to them first that when you do this, everything that you've created is going to be deleted. So we tap revert and then revert to original. I've gone back to my original document and it's not even cropped anymore. So I might need to crop this again. And then I've gone back to my blank document again. So it might be an idea to get your students to tap on the share icon in the top right hand corner and then tap on duplicate to create a duplicate of the blank document. Though you can keep air dropping them the blank document as long as you make sure you keep a blank document saved in your photos. And then you have a blank document that you can airdrop to your students at any time and they can draw whatever picture they like. Here are some student examples. I like how they are all similar yet quite different. 